Hey guys! It's finally the end of May. It feels like this month has just dragged on forever and that's probably because I've had so many problems with work and school and several other things this month but I'm just I'm just so glad it's over and a new reading month is about to begin. Hopefully this one will be less stressful and all the things going on in May did cause a whole lot of stress for me and that really affected my reading. It didn't really slow it down any but I did end up reading a lot of contemporaries. The first book I read was The Trials of Apollo Book 2 The Dark Prophecy by Rick Riordan. This series follows Apollo who has gotten in big trouble with Zeus and has been turned into a human. And to reobtain godlyhood he must regain control over all of the oracles that have been taken over by the Roman emperors and his arch enemy, Python. Since this is the second book in the series, I can't really say much else about it without spoiling it. I can say that I did enjoy the first book a lot more than I did this book, but this was still a really good book and I give it a 4 out of 5 stars. If you want to know more of my spoilery thoughts about it, I do have a book talk up for this book that I will leave linked in the description box below. Then I read Camp Half-Blood Confidential. This book is kind of like all of the other little mini books that are within Rick Riordan series, but those are more like novellas where this one is more like a actual guide and kind of like a mini history into Camp Half-Blood. It goes into who established Camp Half-Blood and how it got its name and how they decided on strawberries of all things to grow. There are a few mini stories here and there, but the majority of the book is basically like a mini history of Camp Half-Blood. And I really did enjoy this. I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next I read Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon and I've been trying to read this book for the past 2 or 3 months now and I am so glad that I finally got it read. This book follows a girl named Maddie who has a very rare disease and has never left her house. And since she's never left her house, she really has never felt the urge to be out in the world where everyone else is. She basically ignores it. That is, until Ollie and his family move next door. And then she starts wanting things she never wanted before and a lot of truths are revealed and a lot of hearts are broken and I have so, so many spoilery thoughts about everything that happened in this book and I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I do have a spoiler free review up for this book so if you want to check that out it'll be linked in the description box below. Next I read 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher and I've actually had this book for a long time. I think a couple of years now. I, I'm not really sure but I've just been putting off reading it for a while now until I learned there's a TV show about it and I decided I can't put this off any longer if I want to watch the show, which I'm not 100% sure I want to watch it anytime soon, maybe later on, but I need to read the book first before I see it. And before I get started into my actual thoughts about the book, I just love the fact that the map mentioned in the book is the dust jacket. This book follows a boy named Clay who receives a box full of cassette tapes and when he listens to them, he hears the voice of Hannah Baker, a girl from his high school that had recently killed herself. And as he listens to these tapes, he travels around town following the map that Hannah left him and visits the spots where all the events from her tapes happen. This is another book that I had a few problems with and I had to keep reminding myself throughout the book that everyone handles stress differently I did enjoy the fact that the reasoning behind everything was little events that just kept adding up and up and up. It just wasn't one big event that caused her to kill herself. And I'm really glad it was a bunch of little events because when someone commits suicide, it's not usually just because of one big event unless that one big event snowballs and ruins their life. It normally is just a bunch of little events that just keep adding more and more stress to you and sometimes it just becomes too much. I think my main problem with this book is that all the little events that were happening, I couldn't really see them leading up to someone killing themselves, but like I said, I had to keep reminding myself that everyone 
reacts to stress differently. Everyone is different. Everyone feels different. Everyone handles things differently. I had to keep telling myself this. So even though I considered all these little things not good enough reasons to kill yourself, even with all of them added up, it doesn't mean that Hannah didn't feel that way, and it doesn't mean someone else reading this book didn't feel that way. I don't want to offend anybody by saying that. It's just that I guess I handle stress a lot better than a lot of people, or either that or I'm very, very good at just ignoring it until it goes away. Either way, it's just I don't mean to offend anybody. It was just my personal thoughts about the book. And other than that, I really did love this book, and I even cried at a couple of points. I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars. After 13 Reasons Why, I really did need to read something a little cutesy, so I decided to pick up The Geography of You and Me by Jennifer E. Smith. Now, when I started reading this, I was under the impression that it was going to happen in the span of 24 hours, and I'm happy to say that I was very wrong about that. The main characters, Lucy and Owen, end up getting stuck in an elevator in the middle of New York during a massive blackout. Neither of these two characters would normally talk to each other, but given their situation, they decide to start talking, and they end up talking throughout the entire night. And once the night is over, a lot ends up happening, and they both have to go their separate ways. But they end up staying in touch through emails and postcards. This story was really, really cute, and I found it very easy to connect to the characters, especially Lucy, because of her living situation. And I think the only real problem I had with this book, besides the parents, I didn't like the parents at all, um, I really didn't like the way the, their relationship developed, because it actually didn't seem like it developed at all. At least to me it didn't. So, this book sadly only got a 2 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was The Problem with Forever by Jennifer L. Armentrout. And this is another book that I've been meaning to read for 2 or 3 months now. And I am so, so happy that I finally got to it. The main character, Mallory, has been homeschooled for the past few years, and she decides to take a big step and go to high school her senior year where she ends up running into Ryder, her childhood friend. And this book basically follows her and Ryder's relationship and how it develops and evolves and they heal each other. I don't really want to say anything else besides that because I don't want to spoil anything for the book because this really, really was a good book. I really did love it and a lot of it was really, really heartbreaking and I would actually love to have a book that focused around their childhood, even though I feel bad about saying that because of everything that happened in their childhood, but I really just want to know more about how these characters became who they are, especially Ryder. I give this book a 4 out of 5 stars. And last but not least, I read the first 298 pages of Lord of Shadows, the second book in the Dark Artifice series by Cassandra Clare. I can't really say much about this because I've only read the first part. Here's part two that I should be starting as soon as I finish this video. Probably won't happen. I'll probably get on YouTube and end up wasting three or four hours of time and then go to bed. I didn't read the summary for this book because I didn't want to be spoiled, so there's nothing I can really say about this book until I've completely finished it. From what I've read, it feels like nothing has happened, but a lot has happened at the same time, if that makes any sense at all. And so far, I think this is my new favorite Cassandra Clare book. Once I finish this, I will be doing a discussion video for it, so if you are more interested in spoilery thoughts, uh, just stay tuned for that video. Hopefully, I'll be able to finish this book by, hopefully, this coming Sunday, but that may not happen. I'm not 100% sure, but fingers crossed. Well, I think I did a really good job with reading this month. Like I said, stress contributed to a lot of this reading, especially since contemporaries are so easy to read. I think Everything, Everything and 13 Reasons Why, I read both those books in a day apiece. I'm 
actually really, really happy to have read this many books. And I just bought a buttload of contemporaries, so I really needed to read some anyways. These are getting heavy. I'm going to sit them down. Well, that's it for this video. You guys should let me know in the comments below what books you've read this month. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!